My name is Lisa Watson and I'm coming to you today on behalf of Cycal Enterprises. They have a really good line of nurse fabrics that um, they got to talking and they felt like this would be just a really great sort of a companionship um, if we wanted to do a mask video uh, and feature some of those nurse fabrics because that's really apropos for some of the people who are ending up using some of these. Um, so I kind of took a look, when they asked me to do it, I took a look at some of the uh, various videos that are out there. Um, tried to find maybe the best pattern, the thing that fit people's faces the best, um, but needed as few extra materials as possible because those are, I think, becoming harder and harder to come by. Um, so I've kind of put one together of my own, a pattern, and also I, I'm kind of picking up on the fact that most of the people doing videos are uh, making some assumptions that everybody already knows how to cut and how to sew fabric, and, and maybe that's not the case. Maybe you're somebody who hasn't done it very much in your life, or you've never ever done it. Um, so hopefully today, in this video, I can uh, give you some tips and things that may help you if you'd like to dive in, um, but you don't count yourself as a professional sewer at all. So, because we don't all have to be, everybody started somewhere. So let's start off. Um, first of all, I wanted to show you their nurse fabrics. They have a number of them, and I'll show you a pattern that they have here in a minute. So they have this one here, and that's going to be the front of our mask. Um, when people are making these masks, and the medical professionals are recommending that they put, you know, put something, one thing on the front, and then a different something on the back, and then that way they can tell side by side, you know, if they go to reuse it, if they have to get a different mask underneath of it, um, when they go to reuse it, they can tell which was the street side and which was the side that was closest to their face. So that's how we're going to do ours today. So there's also this one, which is really great, and then there's a third one as well. Um, so I'll hold that one up for you. So we've got all three of those. I'm going to put them out here until we need them later. Um, and then let me tell you a little bit about um, a pattern that I put together for them. Um, this is a lady at Cykel. She actually designs these quilts out of their various lines. They've got a lot of different really great lines of fabric. You can check them out on their website uh, and check with maybe your local quilt shop. If your local quilt shop is still doing curbside delivery or online you know, ordering and, and shipping and whatnot. Um, so uh, Cykel had already had this nurse quilt that they had designed and so they come, they bring the designs to me and they say, hey Lisa, can you do some instructions? And so I have also done a set of instructions for a nurse quilt. Um, actually, I'm going to put this down here so you guys can get a close-up of it. It's really good. Um, it looks a little bit complicated because there's a ribbon that kind of goes around uh, the various sides of it. But actually, all that is is a certain way that you do your squares. And you just arrange your prints, basically. And I've told you exactly how to do that. Um, within the, the project sheet. So if you're interested in that, go to their website, find, I think there's a place for like extra things or, you know, free patterns, free projects, things of that nature. Go to the nurse area and you'll see a few pages that sort of show you what the SKUs are and then you'll see eventually you'll get to the instructions for it. So and I tried to write those again. I always try and write all of my instructions whenever I do them uh, for anybody, myself or for PsyCal uh, or anyone else so that people can use them easily. I, I you know, I, I don't like a convoluted set of instructions, so I try and make them something that people, people can use. What's really great about the center of this one is it actually features the nurse panel. There's an actual, this whole thing right here. You don't even have to piece any of that because that's actually a whole panel. So check that out if you're interested. We'll set that aside for now. Um, let's start off with uh, learning how to cut fabric for just a second, because I think that's what a lot of people may or may not know. Um, so this here, this is a rotary cutting mat. This is one that I like. There's a lot of them out there. This particular blue one I've had for probably years and years and years, and it very rarely shows any cut marks. Um, so I've been really pleased with it in that way. So um, the, one of the things that you're going to need, uh, let me show you the mask first to start off with. So this is one that um, I kind of came up with. I will tell you this. Uh, let me show you the pattern also. So this here is my pattern and we'll make that available both on my, um, I have a Quilt and Craft Link website, so I can put it on there. Um, I'll put links to all this in the description of this video once I put it up on YouTube. I'm sure Cycal will make the pattern available also on their website. Uh, what this is, I have to give kudos and props. There's a lady named Jessica Nandino, and she's actually a registered nurse. Um, there's a website that uh, she put a pat her pattern and her video up on, and it's called instructables.com. Uh, it's called AB Mask by a Nurse for a Nurse. And you can see that hers is somewhat similar to mine. I, I borrowed her shape. I thought the shape was good. But when I made one up, um, I felt like it maybe might not be big enough for maybe men's faces as well. It's, it's good for women. Um, maybe not for all sizes of faces, big and small. So I took and enlarged it um, a good deal. And then also, 
Uh, I feel like since we're running out of materials to sort of put something metal over the bridge of people's noses, um, I wanted to take and customize it a little bit. I changed hers up and um, where she had just a dart and maybe, you know, other people I know they're putting in pipe cleaners, <laughs> metal, you know, too many sharp objects in my opinion. I know there's a reason for it, but I feel like in the wash those are going to come loose later. So I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm going to show you how to put just a pleat. And what I tried to do is there's a pleat on each side. I'll show you how the pattern works in a second. So there's a pleat on each side. And my hope was, and I tried this, I tested it out to try and get the pleats sort of resting on the either side of a person's, of the wearer's nose. Uh, reason being that way, I feel like that will sort of put it closer to a person's face and then also there's not you know seam and heavy and extra fa fabric right on resting on the bridge of your nose because people have to wear these for a pe long periods of time. Um, there are also other pleats. I'll teach you how to do those in a little bit. Do when you go to print it. She had on hers and I always put on my patterns or I try to also. There's a square okay and it's a one inch square so when you print yours be sure and print it out. Watch when you say print and you're, you get your little box Watch that it specifically doesn't say something like scale to page or 90% or any of that nonsense. Because what you want to do is not let it scale to fit, um, not fit to page or any of that. Um, you want it to print 100% so that when you print it and check it, then this square here measures an inch by an inch. And that way you'll know you're getting the right size. So this is the pattern we're going to use. This is how the mask turns out, basically, and you can see I've started with one fabric on one side, and I've got a different fabric on the other side, and then I've used the inside fabric also for some ties. And then we've got our pleats on the side, and then I've got um, a couple of pleats spaced far enough apart to where they bridge your nose or go on either side of your nose, and then the two pleats on the bottom basically um, will hug your chin, essentially. I kind of tried this on myself as well. Another really critical, two critical things, you guys. Um, they're asking please that you pre-wash your fabrics because I will tell you even really great cotton fabric and that's what this is it will shrink cotton is cotton cotton shrinks okay cotton shrinks up to five percent or more and so if you put all the trouble of making this great mask and it fits someone uh, and then it gets washed later especially in super hot water and disinfectants as they're going to use it's going to shrink up and it's going to become less effective okay so do everybody a favor um, pink the edges of your fabric or do something to control the raveling, pre-wash it, dry it in a hot dryer, and then iron it very well, um, get it nice and smooth, wrinkle-free, pleat-free, and then go ahead and cut out your pattern, okay? The other thing that I will want to talk about is I'm seeing the last 24 hours or so, I'm kind of watching um, the various Facebook posts on different groups and whatnot, um, people have resorted to using vacuum cleaner bags um, as a lining. Or, or also a HEPA filter and the the professionals even the people who make these things are saying hey guys no bad idea um, because all of those things have certain like fiberglass fibers or something similar to that it, it's not safe for people to breathe through so as an alternative this is just two layers of fabric and so they're saying that heavily or tightly woven cotton fabric is a good thing Flannel is coming up, but if you've ever had a layer or two of flannel across your face, like in the winter time, uh, you know, a, a scarf or something, kind of hard to breathe through and kind of stuffy feeling. So stick with just cotton if you've got that opportunity, and especially the nurse fabric if you're making them for the medical folks. And if you want to and want to be a little bit, you know, safer, you can always add a layer of non-woven. That's really critical because if you're going to do it, it may as well be a non-woven. That will help screen out particulates, they're saying. Um, so that's, I, I did, I'm, we're not going to do that today, but if you choose to, this is just a layer cut out from the pattern of a non-woven interfacing. The way you can tell if it's non-woven is it'll have a little bit of sort of a shiny side, and then you can see the little bubbles of glue on the other side, and there's no real weave to it. It's almost like, um, some, sometimes you'll see uh, there are certain sort of materials or window shades or whatnot out there that are made out of this stuff, and you can just tell there's not a weave where threads have been woven together, okay? But this is actual interfacing, like you would put in the cuffs or the collar of a shirt. You buy it for sewing. This particular one is a package that I happen to have on hand. It's Pellon's 931. It's a fusible midweight, uh, and again, it's up to you. Now, the other thing I will tell you, though, is um, I, you know, took one of these. I made it up and uh, sort of a mock-up and a test piece, and I wore it for a little bit, it's awful hard to breathe through, so just think of the end user, um, just take, I know there's a lot of debate and a lot of arguments for, pro, con, whatever, um, just take into consideration who's going to use these and, and, and maybe wear it yourself for a few hours um, and just see if you feel confident that 
uh, the interfacing is helpful or it inhibits breathing because the last thing we want to do is make these folks you know have breathing issues as well on top of everything they're dealing out there um, with so uh, let's go ahead and set the interfacing aside for the moment we'll set the mask aside for a moment as well and then let me show you how to go ahead and cut we're going to need to cut two so along the top of this mask Basically, all I did, and I stepped away from elastic because I think that's harder and harder to come by. Plus, it's a little bit hard to kind of fool around with how it, you know, hides on the inside while you're sewing, while you're sewing up the edges. Um, I did ties, okay? So what this is, is your, most fabrics run between 42 and 44 inches wide, and that's pretty much sufficient. I put it up around my head and tied a nice tie. You know, even people with varying sizes, um, faces and heads, this should work just fine. So that's the width of a piece of fabric. I'll show you that in just a minute. And you need two. You need one for the top, basically, and then one for the bottom. Okay, so that's what we're going to cut right now. So uh, anybody who isn't used to rotary cutting, um, hopefully those of you who are pros, you can just um, sit and sip your tea and have a cookie for a minute. Um, but I'm going to help the folks who may or may not be such pros at cutting out fabric. And specifically, maybe you're a sewer and you're not a quilter and you're like, rotary cutting mat and rotary cutting ruler and, and rotary cutter. How does all that work for me? So, first thing to do is to take your fabric, you leave it folded in half as it came off the bolt. Well, and you've washed it, hopefully, by now. Um, so you're going to refold it so that your selvages, and let's, let's make these so that the selvages are even. That's going to turn out even better, okay? So match up your selvages and, and don't let it go, don't let it get a twist to it, okay? You can see how that's kind of twisting up. You want it to go straight, okay? So take it, even it up, lay it out flat, get yourself a section that is flat and smooth, all right? And then that's going to create a fold. You basically want that fold, if you've got a rotary cutting mat with uh, lines on it, I don't measure using my rotary cutting mat because sometimes the various ones can be off. They don't actually measure what your rulers measure, okay? But you can always use the, the, the lines at the very least are straight. And so what I will do is take that fold and I line it up against one of the straight lines of my cutting mat, okay? The other thing that I do is this guy here, he's been around the horn a little bit. I've worn him quite a bit and I probably need to get a new one. But this is a rotary cutting glove. I have seen people, and I'm on a Facebook group for quilters, and people have posted injuries where pieces of their hands are missing or their fingers are missing, and they've had to go to have surgery and whatnot. So, especially if you're a new person, but I just do it as a matter of safety. Grab yourself one of these, order one online, find find one from your local quilt shop. Um, it's it's it has some dots on it where if you were to at least run up over your finger, it should protect you. So. And this here is a rotary cutting ruler. This is one of the more common sizes, widths, and lengths. And it, it covers, you can see that it'll cover the width of a fabric that's folded in half, okay? So, um, first what you, you, you see you've got here a really ragged edge. And the first thing that you'll need to do before you try to cut any strips is to trim that off. So how am I going to do that? Let's actually move this over just a little bit. Because what I want to do is you want, the whole point of this is to, for it to remain square. Because if things get out of square, then you end up with a strip that kind of looks like a V a bit. And that's, it's not as bad for this binding, but if you ever aspire to become a quilter, that's not really what you're looking for. So I'm also going to take and line up, since I've got the fabric folded so that it's square to the mat, now I'm going to take my ruler and also place it so that it's um, square. So I'm lining up one of the lines of the ruler with one of the lines of the cutting mat. And I'm kind of coming to the edge. Um, don't want to use up, waste too much fabric, trimming it up and whatnot. Um, this is a rotary cutter. This is another one I really love. This one I've tried the Ulfa ones and they don't fit in my hand or, or it's harder to change blades for me. So this is Kai, K-A-I. Um, I've had this dude and several others just like him for years and I love them. Just put new blades in them basically. And it's basically got a setting. You can flip the lever for off and then it's safer if you what I like about this one is it isn't in action until you actually press it down on it okay now do beware if you leave it up like this on the table and you accidentally swipe your hand across it you can slice your hand so avoid that when I have it around the house or in my sewing room I always lay it face down okay so this is in neutral mode and then you've got a if you're only cutting a couple layers of fabric or one layer of fabric you clip it that way or if you're cutting lots of layers of fabric that's my favorite setting there so we're just going to go on ahead and trim this square Okay, get me a straight edge. Here's what I'm doing. You can see I've got my hand on the ruler and I've cut about halfway through. So I'm going to pause for a minute. This doesn't have to be done in one step. I'm going to kind of spider walk my fingers up and then I'm going to finish the cut basically. Okay, you want to make sure that your ruler doesn't do this as you're cutting. 
trust me, I've done it. It's not pretty and it doesn't come up with a nice edge. So apparently I need a new blade because there's a couple of threads there. All right. So we discard that. So now we have an even edge. So what do we want? We want a two inch strip. So we find on our ruler, um, generally, watch your rulers, but generally the one um, furthermost right hand edge is at zero. And then you can see your markings for an inch, two inches. So what do you want to do? You want to make sure that the edge of your fabric, I'll put this in the close up, the edge of your fabric runs right along, okay? Just those, that marked line for two inches. So that's what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and get some glasses because it's going to turn out much better if I do. All right. So line it up carefully at two inches. You want to make sure it's at two inches at the top and two inches at the bottom. Now that I've looked down here and adjusted it, I'm also going to look back up here because sometimes the dude can move around, okay? So make sure and hold it tight, okay? Once you've got it where you want it, I'm going to start a little, again, kind of back here at the back. And I'm at two inches. I'm going to two-inch strip. So I go ahead and cut a two-inch strip. I get to a point where I'm maxed out. If I were to continue cutting from here, the ruler's going to start to wobble around out there, and I'm going to end up with some weird thing at the end. So finger, spider walk your fingers up, okay? If you aren't having a glove, then be very careful as you do that and finish your cut. And then when you lift it up, you'll see that you got yourself a two-inch strip, which we'll use that in just a minute, okay? So let's go ahead. We, need, we said we need two of them, right? One for the top and one for the bottom. Now, I'm no longer paying any attention to the markings on my mat because, again, the fabric's moving around. You know, maybe we're not on an even marking. What I am doing is making sure that the two-inch mark is lining up with the edge of my fabric, okay? So I'm going to cut myself another two-inch strip. There we go. And just kind of spider walk along. All right. So there we have that. All right. So we'll get back to that in a minute. I've already got some other strips cut. Um, so that's, as far as that goes, you need two two-inch strips out of a fabric, okay? And we just use one of the three for now. We can discard uh, the glove. And then let's go ahead and fold this one up. And then what you want to do, uh, let's see. Actually, we could use this one as an example. Let's do that, since we've already got it kind of nice and laid out. So now I've got my pattern. So here's the deal. Um, the pattern itself comes, you know, on a sheet of paper. Probably what you'll want to do is take your paper scissors and cut out this pattern. You don't need the square. Disregard that. That's just to make sure everything printed in the correct sizes, all right? But um, go ahead and cut out your pattern. Best practice, when you're cutting out a pattern of any nature, you'll see that it has a black line all the way around it. Best practice is to cut just on the outside of that black line. If you end up cutting on or inside of the black line, what happens is, <laughs> gradually over time, the more you use your pattern, it can get tinier and tinier. Now, it's small increments, but it's still going to start to add up. So, um, cut with your black line still show. Okay, so that's that. All right. Um... For those of you who are not garment sewers, even some of the folks who are quilters may not know this, all right? So sometimes on a pattern for garments, like the front of a shirt or the back of a shirt or the front of a skirt or whatnot, um, there's no reason to have the whole pattern, okay? And it's easier and more efficient and more, more quick, less cutting, if what they'll do is they often designate that something is to be placed along a fold, and that's what this one does. So it actually says fold, okay? Fold, and there's a top, a bottom, and then there's some sides. Um, pay attention as you're laying out your fabric, because uh, you, what you want to do, gen um, ideally, is get the top of the pattern. It, generally, prints have a, a way, a direction that they run, where it's either right side up, you know, right side up, or vice versa. Um, and so you would want for your pattern, the top of it, to run along to where this is going to turn out right side up when you put your mask together. So, what you can do, I found this out last night, is you can actually get about three of these, three pieces, cut out of um, a width of fabric, basically. So, come on to our pattern. Essentially, what you can do is kind of fold. Okay, and remember we want folds. So, you kind of practice and make yourself a bit of a fold there. And see, that's, you know, it's gonna turn out, that's gonna turn out backwards. Let's fold it the other way, y'all. All right, so. Now, we'll try it from this direction. And we're running right side up. Okay, so I'm being a little overly generous. So here, 
What I'm trying to do is get it so that once I have a folded piece of fabric, there's not going to be a lot of slop here, okay? Um, this is probably enough because sometimes the selvage edge of your fabric has these little pokey holes in it, and this one does, and I'd rather not have that be part of the mask. So what, what I'm headed for here is once you folded it once that way, then you can kind of pick it up and do it again. And this is if you choose to make several at a time. Trying to give you a few tips so that it'll go a little bit more quickly because there's a bunch of these that are needful if you decide to do it. So, and here's what's important. Not so important that my top edges, the outer edges where the folds aren't going to be needed, that those are even necessarily, just within reason, okay? So you're not wasting fabric. What I'm really, really paying a lot of attention to is I'm wanting this fold and this fold, okay, to match up pretty precisely. So I'm going to fold it one more time. Again, not really caring how it turns out on this edge, but I'm kind of pinching it and making sure, and you'll see why in just a second. So you can kind of see I'm wanting those three fold lines to really, really line up well with one another. And here's why. We're going to do some kind of assembly line stuff here. All right, so um, top of the pattern, bottom of the pattern, the fabric is going the right direction. I'm going to place that fold on the folds of the fabric. Okay, grab myself some pins. If you don't have pins, and in, right now supplies are hard to come by, and if you're like, oh, I don't have any great pins, a paper clip could work. Um, so that's an option. Pins are probably the easiest. Okay. So what I'm going to do, uh, if you're more confident putting more than four pins in, you do that, because you don't want this thing to shift around. I'm basically, I've done this once or twice in my life, uh, so, I'm going to just trust myself that I can do a half decent job with four uh, pins. And so I'm going to turn it. It's going to be easier to show y'all. Okay. And all we're going to do is, again, we're trying not to cut off any paper. We're going to pretty much just cut again along those lines, along the edges of the pattern. Okay. And if three is too many, if your hands just won't allow you to cut through all that, then don't feel that you could have to do three at a time. It is just a little bit of a time-saving measure. I'll tell you also, if you can get your hands, if you can order online, um, and get your hands on a pair of these Fiskars razor-edged scissors. I absolutely adore them, for when, especially when I have to cut multiple layers of something. They even come in handy for quilting. Sometimes you're cutting out um, templates and whatnot for quilting, and I, they're my favorite scissors. Okay, so, get rid of our scrap. for now. All right, so how did we turn out, guys? How did we do? There we go. So we've got three, all right? So we're going to go ahead and open this up for a minute. We've got others to work with on our real one, but I'll show you what we've accomplished, okay? So you can see that now we have one, two, so ideally, if you wanted to kind of do three at a time, get them cut out, you could cut out three and then cut out three of something else um, for either the inside or the, you know, whatever's the opposite side of what you just cut. So we've got those. We'll set those aside for now. So, so we're going to need our pattern. I'll show you why in a second. Uh, let's go ahead and pull it out. Okay. So let's take ours. And what do we need to do first? First of all, we want to take our two. And keeping, you can see when you get, you're like, oh my goodness, how am I supposed to tell top from bottom? Well, hopefully you've got your prints running the right direction, right? So you can see this is my, going to be my front side and this is going to be my inside of the mask, okay? So you've got your prints running the right direction. You can also kind of tell if you were to put them opposite ways, uh, the bottom of it is a little less pointy than the top, okay? So you put the two together and what you want to do is you want to put their, their good, their pretty sides together, okay? And put their outsides, wrong sides, on the outside. Now, um, let's go ahead and throw a couple pins in it, and that way we won't lose track of what we're trying to sew together. All we're doing for now, as our first step, is just running a seam along the sides, and then I'll show you something in a moment, okay? All right, so let's sit down at our sewing machine. So let's talk about sewing machines for just a second, you guys. Um, I have a Janome that I really like. I've had it for years. I absolutely adore it. Well, kind of what's handy, as you'll see in a minute, um, it has a thread cutter. 
So we can use that as we go along. Now, um, whatever sewing machine that you're using is going to have markings, hopefully, or if not, you can put some, okay? Um, what you're wanting to pay attention to is, those of you who don't sew a lot or ever, is the distance from the needle out to the edge of the fabric, okay? Um, our first seam, we're going to sew that at 3 eighths of an inch. Now, that's a very unusual and unique measurement. All the quilters just fell over and all of the garment sewers just fell over because it's not either a quarter of an inch or 5 eighths of an inch, okay? I'm joking. They're all, they'll all be fine. Um, but 3 eighths is somewhat unique. Why did I pick 3 eighths? I tried a 5 eighths and it was just a whole mess of fabric. It was a lot of bulk of fabric in there and in a minute when we're going to try and pleat this, we're going to not appreciate having so much fabric. Um, and then I also feel like if we only did just a quarter of an inch, um, cotton fabric can ravel and so we want to avoid that. We don't want these coming apart when someone washes. Hopefully these will get used and washed. Um, and when they do, we don't want that quarter of an inch to ravel out on us. So I just feel better for something that's going to be used, worn, and washed. Um, I feel better at 3 eighths of an inch. So that's what we're going to do. You go ahead and put it up in the machine. You put your needle down. I took my pin out. Um, that's your personal conviction. If you want to sew over pins, and I did it for years on a different machine. I love this one, and I'm not going to try not try not to sew over pins with her, okay, because it can wreck a machine, basically. Um, so try not to sew over pins. Uh, you can basically kind of take them out or just wait until you get there and take them out. You'll see me do that in just a second. So I'm at 3 eighths of an inch um, in terms of, and that's from the needle out to the edge of the fabric. So we're going to go ahead and sew this very quickly. Do please backstitch. Quilters are not used to sometimes backstitching, but in garments and things that will be washed, you definitely, now here we are. Here's what I was just talking about. We're at a pin. I've kind of just, through practice, have anticipated how far out I need to stop. I'm going to hesitate for a second, pull that pin, and continue on down towards the end of my seam, okay? And then backstitch very quickly, all right? And then here's what's handy about the uh, thread cutter. There you go. I'll even come back and thread cut that one. And then let's do the other side very, very quickly. I don't want this video to drag on forever because I know y'all have things to do, but I want to also make sure that everybody has all the information they need. And I'll tell you, if you see as you start a seam that things things are starting to bunch up and maybe your machine is like pulling the fat, it's hungry and it's pulling the fabric down in, um, sometimes two cheats that I have, you can oftentimes begin sewing by not starting at the very edge. I sometimes will start maybe... Uh, a, a light quarter of an inch in and then I'll start stitching and I'll back stitch first and then stitch. The other thing I also can do, y'all can do this too, you always leave a couple three inches of thread as a thread tail, okay? And sometimes I'll hang that, hang on to that and use it as sort of a, um, a handle, okay, to pull my fabric on through, okay? And that can help avoid the chewing issue. Alright, so I'm going to do that. A little bit harder at the end, so sometimes I won't sew all the way to the end of the seam. I'll backstitch, keep it from keep it from chewing up the fabric if possible. There we go, and then go ahead again and finish the seam. Okay, so what will we do? What do we need to do next? What we need to do next is this. I'm going to scoot out the. Cutting mat, never ever ever put an iron on your cutting mat. Um, it will warp it big time. So here we want to take and just kind of press open the seam. You can use your fingernails a little bit as um, pressing devices. Um, also y'all, I think this is understood, but you know, use good hygiene when you're doing this. Um, maybe not have the cat laying on it. Hopefully anybody who uses these will uh, wash them before they use them, but you know, maybe keep the pets off of them. Uh, even though we love our pets, and um, wash your hands, you know. Uh, and then if you detect any illness in your own self, you may, may, or may need to lay off for a little bit. So we're just going to press that real quickly, okay? Pressed, what, basically what I did was press my seam open, and you'll see why in just a minute. Um, so then I'm going to take it, and it's kind of like a little pillowcase without its bottom closed, okay? Technically that would be a pillowcase. We all know how to turn inside out a pillowcase, so that's what we're going to do. All right, and because we press that open, it's now pretty flat, and now we have the opportunity to just fold it on itself, make a nice edge, and then we're going to throw the iron at it just one more time. This is my little tiny iron. I got it at Walmart, okay? Um, you don't always have to have steam. What I love is a spray bottle, and that protects your iron. Okay, so you do that side, and then you're going to want to do this side as well. 
get yourself a nice neat edge. Go ahead and do the middle too. That's the crease lines from earlier. Okay. All right. What you want to do is make sure that you're, it's all neat and tidy and your top edges and your bottom edges are matching up as closely as possible, okay? All right, now we need to resort back to our pattern and remember we want it running the right direction and what we will do is now, here's the deal, um, this bit right here, the bottom, you'll see on your pattern there are three sets of markings. What, I, what we're going to do is we're going to take a line, we're going to mark these lines with pins real quickly to avoid having like pencil marks on it later or something. I'll show you how to do your pleats in a minute. So we're going to do three pleats. But basically this little part here, down here, is your seam allowance and he's now inside. So what I do is I'll just fold that under so it's gone. So now I'm talking, matching up, you know, real things. So go ahead and put that on there. Grab your pins and quickly put a pin. Basically run a pin along each of these marked lines. And I'll show you how that will help you in a second. Okay. If you have marking tools that you trust, like one of those blue um, water erasable pins, that's an option too, or a chalk. Um, again, maybe you have that, maybe you don't. I'm trying to provide you with things that you can use common, readily available materials. Okay, so now you can see I have put get this up here in the video. So I have put a pin basically in each one of the uh, places where there's a line. So I'm going to swap, turn it around and do the same thing. Now it's a little bit harder because now your pattern is kind of upside down and backwards, but uh, you can kind of peek through. Um, depending on what kind of copy paper you printed it on, you can kind of still see where your lines are. So I'm just going to kind of follow those. And this does not have to be precise, you guys. This is just to kind of give you a guideline. Nobody's, this isn't, um, you know, fine art or um, prize winning quilt sewing or prize winning 4-H garment sewing. This is, neatness counts, right? Because people are going to use these and they have to be well made and sturdy and able to go through the wash. Um, and we don't want it looking like we just threw it together. However, um, nobody's going to be measuring your seams or whatnot. So, Put your pins in. All right, now what do we do with those? So here's the deal. Let's go back to where we can actually see what we're talking about. So here's your pattern, okay? All you're gonna do is essentially, let's bring it up here where we can work and see. Basically what we're gonna do is we want to take this pin and move it to this pin, okay? And then that's gonna be a pleat. We wanna take this pin and that pin and move them together and that's gonna be a pleat. We want to take this pin and bring it to this pin, and that's going to be a plate. All right, that's how we're getting those pleats that everybody can see all the masks. So basically, take it and fold, do a fold, okay, in your mask where that first pin is, and make it and then bring the fold over to where the next pin is. Or if you want, just hold it up, match your pins if that's easier for you, okay. Once you've got your pins matched up, then just fold it back, okay? And then take one of your pins and use that to hold the pleat down. So you've got one guy, one guy down. So again, let's do the easier way. Let's go ahead and hold it up. We want to bring our pins together. Okay, see how we've got that? Our pins are set, lined up with each other. And then we will fold it back to make the pleat and use the one of the pins to hold the pleat in place. Let's do it one more time. So we're going to take our one, bring our pins together, fold the pleat basically up toward the top of the mask. We have our pleats all facing down. That's watch watch the direction that you do your pleats. Okay. So when we press this in a second, we're going to end up with three nice pleats, reasonably evenly spaced. Okay. I tried to keep them in the middle because here in a little bit we're going to be adding our uh, stri strips across the top and bottom, and we don't want our pleats hanging out in the way. So. I'm going to come over and very quickly do the same thing on the opposite side of the mask and then we'll sew these pleats down. Okay. And it'll take a little bit of practice. This is not the easiest of the steps, right? But um, you'll get to be a pro before it's done. 
Um, also, I will tell you that I found the other night when I was doing a couple three of these in a row, um, just to get some samples and stuff ready, kind of if you do each step, kind of as what, the, kind of a, what they call assembly line or chain piecing, um, you know, do a bunch of the side seams on a bunch of them. As long as you're continuously doing the same step, it tends to go a little bit faster. So, um, okay, so now you can see, we move our pins out of the way. Now you can see how we've got all of those pinned, and essentially there are our three pleats. Okay, so we're gonna. What are we gonna do next? We are going to run two lines of sewing on each of the edges. All right, we're gonna run a line of sewing a half an inch from this edge, and then just a little bit from this edge. We're gonna run two lines of sewing. Don't cheat and just do one, because this is. We're gonna want to hold and not have these, you know, in the wash come loose later. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna on two sides. We're going to go ahead and um, run a, a seam a half an inch away from the farthest edge of this. And this is called top stitching, okay? It's going to basically hold those pleats. It's, it's basically a convincer. It's going to convince the pleats to stay where we want them to stay forever and ever and ever. Uh, and then we're going to run another stitch just inside. So let me do that very quickly, okay? And really, I wouldn't have you watch me sew on my videos. I try and have all the sewing done. But I think, again, in this case, this is a thing where some folks might appreciate seeing how it's done. So. I've always, when I'm putting it in here, I'm going to start a little bit in. Okay, I got my thread tail, my two or three inches hanging out. All right, so I'm going to start sewing. And even though I'm not holding anything down right now, I'm still going to back stitch because I just don't want this pulling out later. Okay, so back stitch. And now, here's the deal. I've gotten to the point I don't want to sew up over my pin. I'm going to pull my pin, sew up through my first of my pleats, sew up to the next one, stop for a second. Um, sewing doesn't have to be a continuous motion, you guys. Don't feel like you got to hold your breath and just go for it and put the gas pedal on. Um, you can stop at any point, okay? So stop, take your pins out, make sure you're still on a half an inch based on the, the markings on the to the side of your needle, and then run all the way out across, okay? And back up, okay? Taking loose, and trim your threads. All right, now what we're going to do is same deal. But this is just going to be just a little bit inside. So I'm going to start just like I'll show you in a second. It's just an eighth of an inch maybe. Okay. Okay. It's a little bit jammed up because you got a little bit of few layers here. So I'm going to use my cheat trick and, and use the threads as kind of a handle to pull that through. If that fails, and it looks like, nope, there it goes. Okay, if that ever fails, you can always lift up your presser foot, scoot it forward just a hair, and then set your presser foot down again. It's just jammed up, and the it's not, it's the tires are not gripping, okay, trying to run up the hill. All right, so go ahead and keep going. Um, something that I will tell you is, sometimes in the case of this, your pleats will want to flip back up, okay? If they ever do that, don't stick your fingers under there, because um, it's really easy to, you can actually run the needle through your finger. I have done it. Um, this is an awl or a stiletto. Um, it's a handy notion. Again, you can get it um, online, from, online from your favorite quilt shop, okay? Um, you can use with discretion. You don't want to stick the awl like right up under the sewing needle, right? But until you get to the sewing needle, you can kind of feed layers up under and through, okay? So what I'm doing is just pushing a little bit to kind of convince because this is quite a bit of fabric to feed through. I have seen some patterns where they're actually putting, you know, some strips or bias tape on the edges like this, kind of to hold them, but I feel like you're going to end up with a lot of layers that way, and it's just going to be, especially for people who are doing these in a hurry, or who aren't maybe professional sewers, I feel like it's just a lot to try and have to work your machine to run up over, okay? All right, so let's quickly do the same thing on the other side, half an inch away, okay? Pins. Stitch. Trim them off. Okay. And see, here's the reason we do the second. See how that's kind of like splaying out? That's not really what we're looking for at all. Okay? Kind of not the point. So, always also, if you're not familiar with how a sewing machine works, um, you want, you can, you don't leave your threads hanging out over to this side, don't leave your threads out in the front, the sewing machine gets angry, okay? Always pull your sewing machine threads to the back, and I do always do mine a little bit to the right, just because that's, you know, it's easier to reach that way, okay? So, and then we will come and sew just a little bit, and I'll show you in a minute how close or far away that I got. And there he is, he grabbed up the deal. You can hear him thumping a little bit, that's a lot of fabric for it to try and sew through, but he, he'll get there, okay? 
right. Let me cut this loose and then I'll show it to you guys in a close up. Okay. So, here's what we've got so far. So maybe you guys can see this. Move my stiletto. All right, y'all got it? Um, so I sewed a half an inch away, and then I sewed just a little bit from the edge, okay? And same deal. I sewed a half an inch away and a little bit from the edge. And basically what that does is that's controlling those pleats for me, okay? Now, granted, hopefully probably whomever uses these is not going to put them right on their face. Um, they'll probably go through the wash, but uh, I feel like it doesn't hurt if we put a press, especially if you have used interfacing in there, because what you can do is kind of train that interfacing to hold those pleats, okay? So, you're just gonna, it's gonna be a little bit easier to work with and a little bit neater looking. And you turn these in, whomever, okay? So, all right, so what we're gonna do next, we've got it all pressed, we're gonna take our pattern, we're gonna fit it back on here, and now we need to find the top and the bottom of the mask, so we've got the print running the correct direction we need to get our pleats in the tops and the bottom. So we'll go ahead and put in some pins very quickly. Where our lines are, flip our pattern over. And you can kind of see, pull it back a little so that you have room to put your pins in. Put your bottom ones. Let's go ahead and put the top ones in. And you'll do these pleats the same way as you did the ones on the sides. So you'll just basically take your pin, match up your two pins, and in this instance we're going to put the body of the pleat underneath. It's going to be going that way, and then the edge of the pleat is going to be out towards, you can see it's a flap this way. Okay, so same deal, very quickly. All right, so that's your bottom one. You can see they go this way, all right? Let's turn it around so you guys can see the top ones. Same deal, match your pins, fold the, the tuck. It's really almost as much of a tuck as a pleat. Match your pins, fold the tuck so that it folds toward the outside, okay? So you've got kind of, you can kind of see a nose and a chin, you know, shape starting to happen there. All right, now we'll just go to the sewing machine. Let's get rid of our extra pins out of the way. Go to the sewing machine. And what we'll want to do is this. Um, we just want to sew. All we're trying to do right now is just tack down these pleats, all right? Because we're going to wrap these uh, the bias edges around in just a second. So only sew about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. If you sew any wider than that, um, when you go ahead and put your strips on the tops and bottoms, you, you these sewing, these stitching lines, you don't want them to show. So I'm starting not way out at the edges of the mask, right? I'm starting just on either side of each of the pleats. I am back stitching. And the width of my foot, you may find this a lot, the edge of my foot is essentially a quarter of an inch from the needle. Okay. This is a place where you'll probably want to trim it off with your scissors. Just trying to use the guy on the side is a little bit hard when you've got you're in the middle of some fabric. So you've got so there's your top one. All right, so you've got those done. Go ahead, or rather, I guess that was the bottom. This is the top. Same thing. Um, start a little bit, not out here, you know, but start just on the left hand side of the pleats. So back stitch. So. And you'll see um, that it's not as prevalent on the bottom. There's a little bit of a curve there, but there's a very definite point to the top of the mask. So you might want to kind of sew up to that point, stop for a second, turn it a little bit. Some people will be adept at just sort of making that turn as they sew, twisting it under their presser foot. But if you're not, you can always stop and reorient the fabric and then just sew out over to the edge. So past it, back stitch, and trim it off. And then you're ready for the next step which is kind of what pulls it all together. Those will be our straps, okay? All 
All right. So let's look at what our straps need to do for us. All right, so let's grab a strap. All right, so this is where your two-inch strips that you cut earlier come into play. Okay. Um, it's kind of kind of have a middle fold in the middle. So you lay lay them each how you want them. Okay. If you like me, you kind of like your fabrics all run in the same direction. So you want to find and meet to where the middle of the strip, the fold middle, okay, meets up with the middle of the mask, essentially. And it doesn't have to be perfect, all right? Because usually when you tie something, like when you tie your shoes, one end up, ends up being needing to be longer than the other anyhow. So what you're wanting to do, you guys, is this. Um, I think we can just do this. So lay this on top of here. You are putting kind of right sides to underside. Okay, and the way you can test and see if you got your fabric to run in the right way is flip that back out and just wrap it around and it is going to come up running the way we want it to. So essentially that's the trick is just lay your fabrics, find your middles, and then lay it how you want it to be. Put a couple of pins in it to hold it. This seam, we're going to go back to our 3 eighths of an inch again, you guys. And I'll show you why in just a second. That way, when you go and fold the other edge of the binding up around it, it makes a nice fold and it covers this line of stitching that we're about ready to put into it. Okay, so I'm going to just do the same thing. Let's go ahead and just put this, all right, middles together. Okay. It's going to look a little odd. You're like, yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to come together. Um, but it'll make sense in just a second, okay? Trust me. Okay. So now here's what you want to do. You want to sew, just again, now you do want to sew. Instead of here before, when we did the, pulled the pleats down, we just sewed on either side of the pleats. For now, we're going to come out here, not, not a way out here just yet. Start here and end up here and sew basically the strip to the mask for both the top and the bottom. So let's quickly do that. And again, we're going to do it at 3 eighths of an inch. So find that mark, put, put that, put the edge of your mask and strip on that mark on your machine. Stay at 3 eighths of an inch. Also kind of try to keep that curve or that point in the bottom. Make sure to back stitch because this is this is going to be a stress point where you really want it to stay. Okay. And trim your threads off so you don't have to mess with them later. Sew the top edge as well. in the point, so I'm going to kind of bend it around the corner. That's how to do it without having to stop and lift up your presser foot, okay? Alright. So trim all your threads. You really need them hanging out in your way later. So, how do we make this happen? So what we're going to do with the rest of this is we're, we'll go on ahead and wrap these strips up around the edges. And we'll start by taking and folding. So I'm folding these down to the middle to meet up with each other. And then I'm just going to take this strip and wrap it around that edge and go ahead and pin it into place. And I'll just basically keep, I'm going to fold this down a little bit so you guys can see it. So same thing, just taking this upper edge, folding it back to the top of the mask edge, or the unfinished edge, and pinning it into place. We're going to keep following along that edge. And basically when we get out here, this is a place you can see it pretty well. So we're going to meet those up in the middle, bring this down, and just kind of got an extra thread there. Tuck 
them in. Meet those up just that very way, okay? So we can still kind of see a little bit what's going on with the underneath part of the strip, but we are covering the seam where we sewed the strip onto the top of the mask. All right, so what about this part out here? So this is a little bit where the white is showing. Let's turn it under. All right, so we're going to turn it under. We'll fold it here, fold it towards the middle. Fold that down here so you guys can see it. Fold it here, fold it down towards the middle, and then we'll fold those in half. And we'll go ahead and put a pin in it. All right, it's going to look just like that. In that and then very quickly meet up our two pieces edges of the strip in the middle not exactly on the edges remember to keep one parts kind of offset from the other so you can see what's going on with the underside of your strip you're not letting it get away from where you're going to stitch it and hold it all together I won't take the time to pin this whole thing. That's too tedious. Y'all don't need to watch me do that. I'm going to put a pin enough to show you where we're going to stitch this, okay? Now you, yourself, especially the first few that you do, you'll probably, you'll, you'll go ahead and pin from one end all the way out to the other end, all right? And same thing with this bottom. You're going to bring it up around, just like we just did. Pin all the way. Once you've got them both pinned all the way, take it back to your sewing machine. So, just kind of point it out, just kind of along the edge here. You want to sew close enough to the edge to where you're catching it, but not so close that you're going to run off over it. Okay? And I generally, when I've got sort of a hump at the end here, I'll start maybe a half an inch in. I'll also take and run my needle, roll my hand wheel and run my needle down in. Just kind of hold that for a little bit, okay? Because then that leaves me free to go ahead and hold my thread tails. I'm going to hold those. I'm going to back up, back stitch a little bit. Okay. Grab those thread tails to keep me going. These nudge it through. And again, just kind of carefully sew. It doesn't have to be perfection. It has to look neat and to be stable and washable. Okay. give you guys the idea and then I'll show you the finished one and we'll wrap this up. When I get out to that part where the edging, the bottom strip, is coming up around the edge of the mask, I'm going to keep sewing fairly close to the edge, about the same distance as I was where it was just the strip itself. Again, so I'm not leaving a place where things can catch or it can come loose or rattle out later, um, but not so close to the edge that I'm going to run up off. Okay. So I'm going to just back stitch here. Normally you would go all the way out to the end of the strip. We won't take the time right now. Let me just trim that off. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like, you guys. Go ahead and trim off your threads. Don't leave a bunch of those hanging. Trim them off before you give them to someone to use or use them yourself. And like I say, well, you go on ahead and just do that with all of it. So eventually, had we had the moment to taking the time to finish that out, this is what it would look like, okay? So you'll end up with your two, your top and your bottom neatly wrapped and held securely, and then your strips will come out, and there should be enough length there to wrap around um, a variety of uh, faces and, and head shapes and sizes. So um, that's our mask. Hopefully that was uh, a, a enough good information to where you guys can kind of uh, be able to produce one of these yourself. If not, uh, I'll there will be comments. I'll put these up on this video up on YouTube, obviously, and you can put something in the comments. Or you can also email me, Lisa, okay, and you can email me. My, my email address is info at quiltandcraftlink.com. That's my business, my website. Um, 
you can reach me there if you run up against any you know serious questions, things that you uh, just can't figure it out. <laughs> uh, hit me up. Uh, in the meanwhile, also um, someday we're going to get to the point where we're going to be past all of this, and and please God may that be sooner than later. Uh, and we may be wanting to make larger projects and things to thank the nurses in our lives. If y'all do get to that point, um, or you're just going to need to step away from the masks for a little bit and you want to make something else, um, go on PsychHealth's website and find the instructions to where you can download. This is just a PDF. That's a couple of pages. I've got it, again, pretty simple so that most folks could follow it if they'd like to. Um, it's a nurse panel, and then I just teach you how to do the blocks, you know, around all the edges. Be sure and look for all of the nurse fabrics. Um, go online. Patronize your local quilt shop. There are ladies there because they're often just, it's their business. They're not endangering anybody. They're going in. They're able to fill online orders and ship something to you. Um, or if you feel safe in a way to where you can get out and just do curbside delivery, they'll, they'll be very careful and, and observe all the social distancing because um, I know they're, they're there and they would appreciate some business. Uh, other than that, I will tell you, be healthy, be safe, be well, uh, you and your families, and, and my best wishes to you all.